The wife of a former U.S. Army Green Beret charged with murder says she would welcome a pardon from President Trump. Major Matthew Goldstein was charged last week with killing a suspected Taliban bomb maker while on tour in Afghanistan in 2010. The man had been released for a lack of evidence. Goldstein has admitted to the killing, but the details are unclear. He could now face the death penalty. President Trump responded Sunday, tweeting that he will be reviewing the case. He called Goldstein a U.S. military hero. CBS News national security correspondent David Martin spoke with Goldstein's wife, Julie. One of the implications of that tweet is that uh, the president might pardon your husband. Mm -hmm. Are you hoping for a pardon? As, as I said before, what, whatever it takes to have justice for Matt, if it's a pardon, great. So just for the record... Did your husband assassinate this suspected bomb maker? Assassinate? No. My husband took care of an enemy combatant who did harm and was planning to do harm, more harm, to not only American soldiers, but the Afghan civilians that he was there and told to protect as well. And CBS News national security correspondent David Martin joins us now from the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. David, military law experts have raised legal concerns surrounding President Trump's tweet, the one you just spoke to his wife about in that clip we watched. Can you explain what those concerns are? Well, there's a provision in the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which is the body of law that governs the military, uh, that uh, prohibits what's called undue or excuse me, unlawful command influence. And command influence means that a senior officer says something about a legal proceeding while it is in process. And he expresses an opinion that there, thereby might influence the actions of the more junior officers who are actually conducting mm. the legal proceeding because they think if they please the senior officer that will be uh, better for their career. So this this rule is really intended to uh, keep the uh, sanctity of the of the justice system uh, in the military free from influence. And what are the implications or the re the repercussions if that rule is broken? Well, it could be grounds for a uh, a mistrial. And in fact, uh, people have uh, uh, used that in the case of uh, the uh, soldier who. Uh, walked off the base in Afghanistan, Bo Bergdahl, when he was a candidate, uh, then candidate, now President Trump, called Bergdahl a dirty, rotten traitor. And uh, Bergdahl's lawyer tried to use that to get the charges against uh, uh, Bergdahl thrown out, claiming that uh, even as a candidate, the now president had prejudiced the proceedings against his client by uh, expressing such a, uh, a strong opinion about it. In that case, it didn't work, and, and Bergdahl was, uh, was uh, sentenced to prison. But something uh, similar. Me. He was dishonorably discharged. Excuse but me. something similar could happen here. Well, <clears throat> President Trump was, uh, I thought, uh, f very uh, careful in that mm -hmm. uh, tweet because he put the term military hero in quotes. So he was technically just uh, saying what somebody else right. has said about Major Goldstein and, and not technically expressing his opinion. Now, you could argue that any time the uh, commander-in-chief says, I am going to be reviewing this case, that puts a little more pressure on the uh, people who are handling the case. Uh, but um, some of the uh, military law experts I've talked to so far do not think uh, that this will be uh, grounds for throwing out the case. And, and David, since that tweet, have there been any other updates from the White House on this specific case? No, the, uh, the only uh, thing that has happened since then, and it's an important thing, but we don't know uh, the details of it, is that the Army has now turned over the evidence that they are using to charge uh, Major Goldstein with uh, premeditated murder. They have now turned that over to um, Goldstein and his attorney. So they are getting their first look at why, after eight years, remember this murder or, or death occurred 
in 2010, why after eight years does the Army now think, after uh, repeated investigations, that it has enough evidence to, uh, to prosecute Major Goldstein for murder? I spoke to uh, Major Goldstein yesterday. He had just finished reading uh, this evidence, and he wouldn't uh, go into detail uh, about what it contained, but he said there's nothing there. Now, mm. uh, we'll find out when there uh, is a, a court hearing to determine whether or not to proceed with court-martial. And so, David, none of this, though, could be <coughs> tied to the fact that he spoke about killing this person while on national TV? Oh, I think that has a, a, a large part to do with it. The, the chronology here is that the death occurred in 2010. He applied for a job at the CIA in 2011, and during the course of his polygraph exam to become a member of the CIA, he described uh, how he had killed uh, this suspected bomb maker. And an Army criminal investigation uh, agent was watching that uh, polygraph, and he wrote up a version in which Goldstein admitted to, quote-unquote, assassinating uh, this bomb maker and burying his body in a, uh, in a shallow grave. Now, uh, uh, Goldstein and his attorney, excuse me, I just uh, Goldstein's attorney says uh, that he didn't say that mm -hmm. uh, and that, in fact, he does admit to killing the bomb maker, but he claims it was done in an ambush, not as an assassination. Wow. But then when he went on national television in 2016 and said in no uncertain terms that, yes, he did kill that bomb maker, uh, the Army reopened the investigation. And it is that reopened investigation that has somehow, we don't know how, produced new evidence that uh, persuaded the Army, where it previously had not filed criminal charges, this time to file the most serious of criminal charges. Thank you for clarifying that timeline. It's certainly very sure relevant. Um, and David, while we have you here, I also want to ask about Vice President Pence's announcement that the Department of Defense will officially be creating a space command. What is the goal, and do we know how much all of this is going to cost? Well, uh, first place I should explain, there is already a space command. It's called the Air Force Space Command. And what uh, uh, Vice President Pence announced today, and it's based on an executive order that President Trump signed, is elevate that Air Force Space Command to what's called a unified space command, so all of the services that have anything to do with space would be under one command. Mm -hmm. It essentially raises Space Command one level up the, uh, the hierarchy within the military, gives it more clout gives it more visibility, but it is a, a still a long way away from what uh, President Trump has been talking about, which is a space force, which would be a brand new military service, its own uniform, its own academy, uh, its own staff, uh, an entirely uh, different thing than this space command that uh, was announced today. So the space alongside, command is, would it be alongside <clears throat> and equal to the Army and the Navy then? That's the ultimate goal? It would be alongside and equal to uh, uh, commands like uh, the European Command and the Pacific mm -hmm. Command okay. and the Northern Command. I see. <clears throat> all right, David Martin, thank you so much for sharing all sure of thing. your insight with us. Thank you.